A very good day to you. I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's a beautiful autumn day. The sun is shining. The maize crop is drying off, about ready for harvest. The grass is still nice and green. The cattle are fat. We've just weaned all the calves, and it's a great day to be alive. I want to say to you today, my dear friend, it's all or nothing. All or nothing. That's what happened with Peter, the big fisherman. Once he realized the Lord Jesus Christ had forgiven him for denying the Lord three times, he was so full of joy and so full and proud to belong to Jesus, nothing held him back. There was no fear of man. There was no concern about performance. He was free. That's how you need to be, and that's how I need to be. If we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 21 and verse 7, we'll see exactly what I'm getting at. Peter had thrown caution to the wind. He couldn't care what people thought about him. He wasn't worried about his dress code. He wasn't concerned whether he was accepted by his peers. I'm talking to young children, those at school. It's what Jesus thinks of you, young lady, not what the other girls think about you. Let's go to John chapter 21, and I'm going to read from verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, that was his coat, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. Isn't that amazing? I don't know why he did that. I mean, I think you would take your outer garment off, wouldn't you, to dive into the sea? Well, it wasn't the sea. It's actually the Lake of Galilee. But Peter put it on, and he just bailed overboard. Eh? <laughs> All his uh, concern about uh, what would people think about him equaled nothing. He just wanted to get to his Savior. He wanted to be the first. Peter was always the first in, right? Even when it meant uh, changing feet, as they say. He was like a bull in a china shop. You couldn't hold him down. But I think there needs to be more Peters in these last days. Whether it be in church, whether it be on the sports field, whether it be in the school, in the workplace, we need to be expressive of our love for Jesus. When you realize what he's done for you, he's given you eternal life, He's forgiven you your sins. He probably introduced you to your wife or to your husband. He's taken care of your children. How many times when maybe members of your family have been on the critical list and the Lord has pulled them through? Hey, sir, what about that time when your business was about to go bankrupt and no one wanted to know you and Jesus stepped in? That's what happened to Peter. Peter was a write-off, folks. Peter had denied his Savior three times after promising faithfully that he would stand with him to the end. The Lord loves you and me so much. He told uh, Mary Magdalene, go and tell my brothers and Peter, I'll see them at the lake. That's how much Jesus loves us. He knew Peter wouldn't go on his own. So he said, be sure Peter was there as well. Peter threw caution to the wind. You and I need to do that. Okay, consistency and convictions out the window. <laughs> He just wanted to be with the Lord. And I tell you what, the Lord honored him and the Lord said, you will be the head of my church. You will head the, the gang up. Folks, we need to throw caution to the wind. We need to let people know. If you, if you like to worship God in church with your hands up, do it. And if you don't like to do that, don't do it. And if God says, I want you to kneel, kneel. And if God says, I want you to at that next uh, stock sale, Will the farmers tell them about what Jesus has done for you? Do it, and he'll honor you. Don't be ashamed of him. He's never been ashamed of you. God bless you, and goodbye.